Hi guys, Jordan here, and today we wanted to show you how to use and get the most out of our new grunge transition pack from Motion Array. But first, let's take a look at what this pack can actually do. So here we are in Premiere Pro, and in case you don't know how to download and install our plugins, we've actually got an entire video just for that, and I've linked to it for you to check out. So let's start by looking at this new grunge pack and how to use it. We've already got some clips laid down on the timeline here, so let's go to our transition plugins by going to our effects panel and going down to video transitions. And they've got their own folder right here in your video transitions dropdown. You can see that there's five different styles of grunge transitions that we can select from, but let's check out the paint splat effect here first. To use them, just drag and drop it right between the clips that you want to transition between. And the transition already takes place on its own. Sweet. It already looks pretty good, but what's great about these transitions is that you can have a lot of control and versatility over how you use them. First of all, to edit these transitions, go to the one that you want to edit on your timeline and click it to highlight it. Then go up to Effect Controls. From here, you should have a bunch of different options available to you. First notably is this drop down for versions. Basically with each of these different transition styles, you have five to six different variations. So really between the five different styles, you actually have 26 different transition variations and changing them is as easy as going to this drop down and selecting a new version. But once you've got the transition down and in the version you're looking for, you can actually control it even more. You have position, X and Y scaling, angle, and flipping direction. The position simply lets you take the location of where this transitioning is occurring and lets you move it left, right, up, and down. But you may notice that when you do this, a clear edge shows up displaying the limitations of where this effect is actually happening. That's because you're probably only going to use this positioning in context of also using scaling. Let's scale up the x-axis here, which will stretch out the transition mat horizontally. And then let's do the same amount for the y-axis so that it's proportional. Now when we move our positioning around, we can see that we're actually adjusting the detailed look of how our transition takes place without showing any of those edges of the frame. Cool, right? Keep in mind though, when you're using these transitions over text, you likely won't have to scale up at all in order to prevent seeing edges when you move it around the frame. Next up we have the angle. Like before, when you have the scaling turned up, you'll be able to get different angles on the transition mat without the edges showing up. So to really show how useful this is, let's go to the brush stroke transition and lay it down between two clips to take a look at. If we now scale up and change the angle, it actually changes the direction of how this transition moves from one side to the other giving us a huge amount of control over the look of our transition. And finally, let's add the paint roll transition and take a look at what happens when we play around with our flip direction parameter. Like you might expect, when you do this, you can very easily flip the transition style that you have selected in either the horizontal or vertical direction. So when we flip it horizontally, it goes from moving from left to right to right to left. And the same goes for the vertical direction. From this, to this. Great, but keep in mind that these transitions, like any transition, can be used in pretty fun and creative ways. Like say for example that you have a clip that you just want to give some additional life and create some interest around. You could create an adjustment layer, place it above the clip, split it up into two pieces, and place down one of the transitions between them, like the paint roller transition. But here's the catch. Now if we take this first adjustment layer selection and do a Lumetri color adjustment, say giving it a black and white look, we can actually make our transition look like it's acting like a paint roller for the color of the clip itself. Pretty cool, right? So guys, I really hope that you like these transitions and that you're able to come up with some pretty fun and creative ways to use them in your next project. But guys, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah.